Oh, I kind of wanted to see this, chat. Guys, this, this looks kind of boring, but chat, I'm going to watch it. And then I'm done. The person who gets the most votes wins. Not sure. Let's talk about this. That's the character. In the US, Unless you bring up delegates. we basically have two choices in elections. And listen, it's not going amazing. Government shut down. Split Congress. Great divide. Cannot agree. Two polarized. Big majorities don't want either oh, one of them. What's this noise? Wait, you hear this? There's a fucking bird yelling in the backyard. It just, bro. I thought you were going to fart. You guys hear this? anymore them running big majorities of us actually don't want the two-party system at all we want more options but a lot of the time we actually do have more options it's just that when it comes time to vote for them we mostly yeah don't. yeah people don't yeah it takes time kind of can't in our system Kanye. voting for a third party helps the party you least agree with it's just a protest vote but there's a way we could make it more than that. We just need to take a closer look at this. New England, the northeastern region of the US. About 15 million people live here. These six states send 21 representatives to Congress. And in the 2022 congressional elections, 36% of voters here voted for Republicans. But none of this region's 21 representatives are Republicans. It means that the perspective of the New England Republicans, who have historically been fiscally conservative and more socially progressive, is not reflected in Congress. This is because of the way we elect representatives to Congress, where every representative comes from a different district. Each district holds well, its own election, and in each election, the person who gets the most votes wins. These are winner-take-all elections, and they produce this result all over the country. Take the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma has five congressional- I don't think Republicans are dumb. I don't agree with a lot of the social takes about uh, uh, Republicans, but uh, some of the some of the uh, uh, economic ones, probably more. I think I, I find something to be more on the right economically um, than on the left. I think left is more like um, brain dead. districts, it votes one- I think like the ideologies of the left when it comes to economics, is like, I'm gonna put a bowl of candy out in the front yard. Please only take one. Oh no, somebody took all of them at the same time. That's really lame, dude. Well, I mean, no shit, dude. It's just kind of how it is. Third Democratic, it has no Democratic representatives. And before we start blaming gerrymandering for this, in other words, the shape of these districts, in Massachusetts, which I admit does look kind of gerrymandered, a group of independent map makers looked at this situation, and they tried to draw new district maps that would give Republicans some representation here. But they found that though there are more ways of building a districting plan than particles in the galaxy, every single one would produce a 9-0 Democratic delegation. And now imagine if in every single House race, there was also a really popular third party getting 25% of the vote in every district in the country. That party would earn zero seats in Congress. If you ask yourself, why haven't you voted for a third party? Most of the time is, well, they don't really have a chance. Our system by its very nature precludes and they're right. competition. But most democracies don't actually work this way. In 2021, a German center-right party called the Free Democratic Party won about 90 seats in Germany's parliament. German federal elections have about 300 constituencies that work sort of like America's districts, with each one electing a single representative. And out of every one of those races, the Free Democratic Party did not win a single one. But Germany uses a form of what is called Proportional representation. Proportional representation means that a share of votes gets you a share of seats. These are four common types of proportional representation. And one way to understand each of them is, are you voting for a person or are you voting for a party? 
So at one end of that spectrum, in a closed list system, like they use in Spain, for example, you might not even vote for a candidate. You just vote for a party. Each party wins some percentage of the vote, and those percentages each translate into a certain number of seats. The people who fill those seats come off of each party's list. So voters don't get to choose those candidates. That's the closed part. But there are also open list systems, which are maybe the most common, used in places like Finland, Belgium, Denmark. A standard version of this is you vote for a person, and your vote counts towards a larger party total, sort of like we saw before, determining how many seats each party gets. But in open list, you do choose the candidates. The seats go to the people in each party who got the most votes. Germany uses a system called mixed member proportional. Mixed because in their system, you cast two votes for a person and for a party. Each district elects one person and those people fill some of the seats in parliament. But the rest of the seats are filled by looking at the party vote and then doling the remaining seats out to the parties until the end product is proportional. Are you always going to choose the, party the same party as the person you vote for, though? And the last one we'll look at is the one that Ireland uses to elect its legislature. And this is actually a version of something we're already starting to do in some congressional and local races in the U.S. Ranked choice. Ranked choice. Ranked choice, ranked choice voting. In ranked Still choice voting, you. instead of just voting for one person, you rank multiple candidates. It's a system that encourages you to vote for smaller parties and less established candidates because if your first choice is unpopular, they use your second choice vote. And that process repeats itself that actually makes sense. until a certain threshold is reached. On its own, though, ranked choice voting I don't, I don't doesn't necessarily that. make these smaller candidates that much more likely to actually win. They will be at a disadvantage in any election that only Damaged one hard. person can win. But if you lower the threshold of victory in a ranked choice race, that produces multiple winners more proportional to the vote. All of these systems have different formulas for turning votes into representation. What they have in common is they all distribute power proportionally, instead of just relying on this. Now, you'll notice we spent the last few minutes talking about Congress, Parliament, chat, legislatures. Presidential elections even Twitch can chat definitely be bad. First mess He made more we legislatures. Won. Presidential elections can definitely be made more fair. That is another video. But they will always, by definition, be single winner elections, most likely to be won by the more established parties. But if Congress is more representative and less polarized, it could change the whole partisan dynamic around the presidency. Right now, if the president wants to pass a law, he or she, with rare exceptions, needs both Democrats and Republican Isn't parties. Isn't that hard to get shit done, though? But if there were three or four or five parties in Congress, that would open up far more coalitional possibilities and combinations to pass laws. The key to making this happen will be taking these single winner elections that we use to elect Congress and replacing them with multi-winner elections that pick, say, three to five people to represent a district. For example, Oklahoma, now five congressional districts, could act as a single district, holding an election that five people can win. It would still mostly be represented by Republicans, just not exclusively. Uh. Another option is that we could keep many of our current districts and just make Congress bigger, so use Who's each right? district uh, like to it. elect more representatives. Lucky talk about that. But okay, how do we actually do any of this? You're done with them. Federal law currently says that no congressional district can elect more than one representative. So to make Congress more representative, that is what we'll need to change. But that change needs to be made by Congress. When the country is struggling to even agree on small things, it can feel really unthinkable. But then there are plenty of indicators that being a member of Congress is pretty miserable these days. Changing the system would let members focus on the reason they ran for Congress in the first place, serving their community, making sure they get things done. But there are other ways to change things too. The states each choose how their own state legislatures get elected. Cities choose how their city councils get elected. And the hurdles to changing those are much, much lower. 
the more experiments we can try, the more different forms of proportional representation we can implement in the United States, uh, I think the better I like learning. ultimately um, our democracy will be. This rule feels really simple, but so Germany's doing it right and we're doing it wrong. No. It hides a lot of problems. We are one of the oldest, if not the oldest, democracy in the world, right? All these different other democracies, most of the world's democracies, are using a system that's better. We just need to update our system. Thanks for watching. Um, one really important way that we're able to continue making videos. Interesting. See how tricky the chat is. Let me see. Let me check them out. Yeah, well, they all said bold when this guy came up. Well, well, he was very bold.